This video is made for adult collectors because he literally has rotor blades for hands. The first movie only had 5 Autobots and 7 Decepticons, so filling a toy line with just those doesn't really work with how grand this movie was and how popular the toys got. So Hasbro and Takara made so many different redecos of Unicron Trilogy toys and a few new molds, and I gotta say, those new molds, they were bangers. Case in point, this guy. This is Incinerator, and I know I've made this joke before, but seriously, how do you do anything with those hands? Wash your face? No. Brush your teeth? No. Wipe your ass? No. Eat? No. <laughs> Jokes aside though, it would have been nice to have like hinges on the end of these things so you could use them as like fold out claws, but I think that would have made the propellers a little too heavy for the world's most bomb ass gimmick. But we do gimmicks later. First, the toy. Like this looks really cool. There's an amazing level of detail on display here. Lots of wires and pistons and panel lines and the colors chosen, whether you like them or not, make the whole toy pop. This was during that Earthspark power time where they were spraying this blue color all over the toys and calling it Allspark blue. I think it had something to do with like the Allspark bringing these vehicles to life. I, I can't remember. It's very garish and in your face, but personally I like it. Breaks up that dull gray and adds color to the mix. But I remember back in 2007, this blue being such a big complaint from a lot of people because it doesn't fit a lot of the time, especially when you put it on like Brawl or Jazz and it just looks really weird. I love the way the actual cockpit splits in half to form the chest. However, the panels like to move a lot and they're on springs, so they just don't sit in one place. Kind of wish they clipped in somehow, but eh. And the handle. He has this massive ass handle right here and maybe he's into that, I don't know. But the reason it's here is because of the bomb ass gimmick, again, later. The handle does limit his posing options though and he consistently has to lean forward, otherwise it will touch the ground and it kind of like puts him off kilter. Yes, his hands are propellers and that makes getting him into a display really annoying because like toys such as Payload from the first movie and Mixmaster from Revenge of the Fallen take up so much room, the amount of shelf space he needs to look good is hampered by the handle and those arms. However, the propellers can detach if that's something you're okay with and there are rather hard to find replacement propellers out there that actually make them into claws. I remember someone making that a long time ago. Now the bomb ass gimmick. Let's let's talk about that. Yeah, so the propellers spin, which in itself isn't spectacular. There's a lot of toys out there that do spinning propellers, but they spin wherever the arms are located. It doesn't matter where they are. Over here, over there, up there, down there, wherever. You pull the lever on the ass and the propellers spin. Well, one does anyways. The right one broke itself literally a month ago. It's a very complex mechanism in there. I believe it's all gears and there's like no cables, but something somewhere between the handle and the shoulder gave out because the shoulder gear isn't turning anymore unless I move the arm around. And I don't know how you would look for one that works because sealed or not, it's sitting there for so long. It's eventually going to not work anymore because of dust, dirt, play, being stationary for so long that the gears begin to stick. It's going to be very difficult to find one that works. Honestly, it was a miracle mine worked at all when I got it, let alone both propellers. But hey, one of them's dead now. So Springer's... Springer. Cyberchar shark fell over. I... Cyberchar... I can't speak English today. I called this idiot Springer. So Incinerator. There we go. Incinerator's posing, well, you don't buy it for its posing, but it, it, it has it. You you can pose all of his limbs and stuff, and he's got actual, like, extra articulation you wouldn't really expect for a movie one Voyager, but this, this right here, really sort of limits what you can do with this guy. So the head is on a ball joint, right? You get a lot of movement there on the ball joint. There's actually quite a lot of space for how wide and round the bottom of his head is so you can really like you know you can look pretty much wherever you want him to look now due to his transformation he has butterfly joints they they don't really support the weight of his arms fully but they're there so you can move his arms back if you want to you got full 360 degree rotation and you don't have to worry about the like i can put the arm back here and it'll still spin you got in and it goes out all that way still spins in and out notice how it's actually moving the propeller when you do that 
That's just a byproduct of how the gears work, but I think it's a really cool effect. It also goes to show you that this side works below the shoulder, but somewhere in here, it just died. Uh, you have a bicep swivel, again, bicep swivel, does not hinder the gimmick. You got elbow joint. El obviously you can see the elbow is not hindering the, the gimmick. And then if you want to, you can untab this and rotate it. If you want to do that, I don't know what you would achieve with that, but it is there if you want to do it. Nothing at the waist, and honestly, when you go to pose the legs around, that likes to happen a lot. And so it's kind of annoying. Get, get back in, there we go. Legs can go forward about that far. They, can, they can't go back because there's a thing in the way. You can do the splits, you can go all the way up actually. Um, you do have thigh rotation. You have a knee bend that only bends that far and that's it. Any farther you will pop the leg off. Also the legs do just like to, you know, is it this one, which one is it? One of these legs, of course I'm not gonna do it now, but sometimes they like to just pop off randomly. It's just like shoved right into, doing this to the toy is a bit weird. It's just sort of shoved into the leg. So it's not like it's broken. It just likes to pop off. And then the ankles, they can go down, they can't go up, but ankle pivot, not even necessary for the transformation because that's all the, the feet do in transformation is that. They added that because they wanted to. And that's cool. Seeing a 2007 movie toy with actual dedicated ankle tilt and like a full range, you can go all over the place if you want to. So that's neat. I, I just, I like everything about the posing. There he goes. I like everything about the posing except for this. I love the gimmick. I think the gimmick is awesome, but I kind of wish they could have moved it up a bit so you could sort of like maybe split this and fold it up this way so that it doesn't hit the bottom and you have the gimmick closer to the, the torso so there's no chance of it like, well, there's less risk of it breaking on the inside because there's less gears to worry about, but it's still pretty neat. It's hard to get him to look cool in these poses though because he's constantly leaning forward like the Hunchback of Notre Dame, but eh, at least he's got ankle tilts, I guess. Transformation is simple enough. Getting the cockpit and arms in place is really satisfying. It's the legs that are the issue. You end up having to push the panels past each other and flex certain things to get stuff pegged into place and it can feel scary. The plastic around these parts is designed to survive all that, but it can still be a bit nerve wracking. He turns into an approximation of a V22 Osprey, probably because they didn't have the proper licensing for the vehicle itself, but it looks awesome. And why can't we get more of these Hasbro? More Osprey alt modes, please. It's such a cool vehicle and we don't get it like at all. Studio Series Incinerator, come on, man. You can get, you could definitely get Boeing on your side. If you can get Lockheed, you can get Boeing. It's a very nice looking vehicle though. It's one of those ones where you can feel the sense of scale on this thing. And I think the segmented cockpit is really what helps that. The Oswark Blue is still present, but not as prominent. This time the color scheme being dominated by the different shades of gray and the gray breakup, especially on the top looks nice, except for the section on the wings. I don't know why that's two different shades between each, but all right. The gimmick still works in this mode, well one side does anyways, and the rotors can tilt forward and back and when you do that the gimmick still works. It's, this is like my favorite gimmick of any toy, like of all time. There's even fold out landing gear with rolling wheels. Remember when they used to do rolling wheels? I definitely recommend this, especially considering I see used ones go for cheap all the time. I paid 10 bucks for this used a few years ago, but you could probably still find it for around 15 to 30 depending on where you look. I saw one maybe end of last year at a local used game and toy shop for $35 used, but the gimmick still worked. So like you can find it for pretty decent prices. Now, if you want the Takara black one that comes with an AllSpark, good luck, but it's still a great looking thing and I highly recommend it. But that's my look at Incinerator from the first movie. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.